Hi Aries, welcome to November 2017 love reading. It's Raina here. Shuffling the cards. Speaking of cards, I'm using a new deck by Jennifer, Jennifer Galasso, Crystal Visions Tarot. One of these days I'm going to get an affiliate page on Amazon because they have a lot of money and uh, I'm promoting them. <laughs> So I should I should put a link to to my products and then uh, to the to the the products I'm talking about and make a little something something if, if somebody decides to buy this deck right wouldn't that be smart of me? Okay. And this particular deck, I mean, whether you want to look at it this way or not, I feel like it's been having kind of a subdued energy like for the readings where it's been more of a spiritual thing so we'll see like sometimes it's more cut and dried and this it seems almost like more philosophical in terms of the the way the readings have been going so <clears throat> we'll see what you think about it Okay. I was just, I know this is, uh, <laughs> sometimes I say, don't, don't tell everything that's on your mind because it's so like out there. But I was, while I was putting out these cards, I felt like I wanted to say, I think there's somebody here who may be, and then I was thinking of the 700 Club, I was thinking of Pat Robertson, and I always uh, enjoyed, I used to watch the 700 Club, and um, I always enjoyed when they would have that prayer time and they would be like talking about different people in the audience, so there's somebody out there who's got this, and it was just funny because it was like these psychic uh, readings, but they don't supposedly believe in that so it's kind of funny that they were doing it so but anyway um this um what i was going to say was that it, it seemed to me that some, some of you i don't even know if it's like a large percentage because I, this is so general let's get real here Someone might have a workplace relationship that's connected to their boss. Um, and it just kind of popped out at me because this is the focus card. King of Swords, kings can be the authorities. The, the people that are above you in rank. So like a boss... And because of this, and maybe even your mentor, somebody, because this is the Eight of Pentacles, can be you as somebody who is training under somebody. So it's in that realm, or just really working hard at, at what you're doing and perfecting your craft. But with the King of Swords, this person, of course we could say that this person is an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or has this prominent in their chart. And because of this, that they are the kind of person who is very cut and dried. Um, they're not emotional. They're uber rational to the point of abs abstraction, to the point of being out of touch with their feelings, and therefore... It's like a two-edged sword, pardon the pun, where it's like one part of them, you may be attracted to them, 
mentally, but the same thing that attracts you may repel you because you're like, why doesn't this person have emotions? You know, you're, you're, a, you're a fire sign, so you are very passionate about life. And definitely air signs, like let's say your opposite sign Libra, and you get along famously. But there always is going to be between even two elements that are very compatible like air and fire there's always going to be this dynamic where the fire person feels like the air sign person is too abstract and they are not in touch with their feelings and then the air person thinks that the fire person is very chaotic very out of control they may not like the fire person's antics because especially with Aries there can be a lot of that dramatization the drama of life and if this person happens to be a Libra your opposite sign that person may dislike the feelings that they get from you when you are very riled up about something that you tend to lose your temper and they may feel like you are a powder keg, um, to put it mildly. Um, and that may be going on, I'm trying to think, but the thing is too, for some of you, you may be trying to make this work with this person and trying too hard to make it work. Let's see what, that's the past position. Now we're talking about the strength card is now. So what does the strength card mean? Well, it's finding the reserves from within yourself. So with Aries being a cardinal sign, you tend to like, okay, here's the problem. Okay, this is, I'm going to take this action to solve this problem. And it works really well when you're, on the job because it's it's easier to manipulate your uh, work situation when you're dealing with another person it's a lot more complicated to try to get somebody to do what you want them to do it doesn't really work that way that's not how life works and so the best thing that people can learn is how to cultivate their inner strength. And it's funny that the strength card, I was always thinking in terms of Leo, because Leo is the, um, the sign that's connected to the strength card. But I was reading about how, how the strength card really is talking about the inner resources. And that makes a lot of sense. For some of you, uh, a Leo person may be in your life right now, and this is perhaps a um, either somebody who's helping you to, to cope with a, a particular situation, or they are a pleasant diversion. But the other thing is that you may be learning about yourself, and that's why I got the strength card, that you're learning that your greatest strength is your inner power that trying to get other people to do things is not a sign of strength it's not a show of strength or a sign that you have strength a lot of times Aries people get accused of being pushy because they want other people to do what they want them to do but the truth is that um, when you have to force somebody to do something, that just shows you what's really going on, that, that other people are not, uh, that the other person is not interested in what you're talking about. Um, for instance, with the Eight of Pentacles, it could be you trying too hard to get somebody to do something you want them to do. And I'm talking about this King of Swords person. 
the King of Swords, and, and you know, an example would be that you're involved with somebody who's married and you're trying to get them to leave their spouse and they won't do it. So if you're engaged in an affair. The higher message is the Knight of Wands, which actually I always associated with the sign of Aries, but it's supposed to be Sagittarius. And um, this is a card that talks about in this, this is possible, possibly what's happening. Now, this could be the same person as this. Um, it's a combination of the, the knight and the wands. It's a combination of air and fire, from what I understand. If I'm not mistaken, that's the combination. And um, it might, no, actually, it's a double fire, I think. Yeah. And it can indicate... A chaotic situation if it's an individual this person may be in and out of your life and it can be more of a physical relationship so as the higher message if you have and it's right in, underneath that king of swords so if you're involved with somebody you may think that your relationship is one way and they may have a totally different view of what your relationship is about. This happens so many times, it's not even funny. Um, and I'm going to use gender because that's what I have seen personally, where women have a tendency to think they're in this rom grand romance, and the other, for the other person, it's a booty call. It's a glorified booty call. So how does that happen? Well, sometimes if I look at somebody's chart and they have Venus and Mars in conjunction, they may really, to them, sex is love. So they don't see the difference. And they have a tendency, if they have a great physical chemistry with somebody, they're like, wow, okay, I'm in love. And it's, it's not that way at all. And with Aries being a very lusty sign, this is even more pronounced because you mix... Uh, you mix lust with haste, which is another Aries trait, and you get um, booty calls. And the, the, the ego sometimes wants to flip the script and change the narrative so that it seems like it's more than what it is for their own sake. Um, and I don't, I don't think even like an Aries woman typically needs to make something more than what it is. But there might just be that feeling is like, oh, wow, I'm really attracted to this person. I'm in love with them. And especially with Aries, there can be that love at first sight, especially if you have Venus and Aries and stuff like that. And you, it, you may be like thinking it's love at first sight, but it's lust at first sight. You're attracted to them physically, and that overtakes the, what's happening. So the spiritual message is saying, is this relationship really a heart-centered relationship or is it something that is a physical relationship and is this person capable of having a committed relationship the card that crosses you the situation that crosses you is the chariot card um, and this is about maybe you're you're being you're scattered right now Sometimes people get scattered because they are so smitten uh, by somebody that their logic flies out the window. Or maybe you're kind of shaken by something that has happened that has kind of made you question that person. For instance, the Knight of Wands, as I said, if this is that person, they can be very unstable in their life. They may show up at your doorstep and then you don't hear from them for a couple of months. Now, is that the same as that King of Swords person? I don't know. Some For some people, the King of Swords may be like a, a, a divorce decree. You know, that can be like a judge, a judgment, a judge. And so now you're on your own and you are kind of going running wild and you're getting involved with people or a person and 
you've lost your head, you've lost your way. The chariot in the upright position is being focused, being one-pointed, and um, that victory that comes from being one-pointed and not allowing the distractions of life to kind of take over. When it's in the in the opposite position, it's being out of control, okay? And that may be contributing to your to a lack of what would I say? Just a a lack of um, stability, or <laughs> I was going to say sanity. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Aries. I actually did your reading yesterday, and the memory card was corrupted. So. That was a really nice reading. I wish I could remember it, but this is, I'm doing this over, actually. And um, I'm going to pick an extra card after this is over because that's what I did the first time. What is coming in, or what is um, the advice? This is represented by the Knight of Swords. This is a card that is connected to, this is what I, I said Knight of Wands was air and fire. That's actually, I think, a double fire. This is fire and air. So it's a combination of intellect and passion, whether this is another person that comes on the scene who has the combination. You know, I'm looking at that King of Swords and that Knight of Wands, and that's the air and the fire. But this is a person that has both within themselves. And as advice, it's about being, being like honest with others in your life, cutting to the chase. Now, this is something that Aries people tend to do anyway, and you tend to be very blunt. But perhaps there is a situation that is happening that you've been kind of avoiding. If there's a person in your life and you're not happy with their behavior, and you've been holding your tongue because you're afraid of making waves, very uncharacteristic of you, but always possible, that you need to have that talk. It's time to have that talk. Um, maybe you are involved with somebody who's like the Knight of Wands, and they're here one day and gone the next, and you don't want that anymore you're tired of that and yet you haven't made your feelings known to this person it could mention that it could be that some someone's coming in that is an air sign and they might have fire in their makeup as well so this again would be a gemini libra aquarius and they may be a person who you feel much more compatible with um, than this other individual who may be like very sexy, very desirable, but just very unstable. The other thing too is that there was something else I was going to say about the Knight of Swords. Oh yeah, this could be a lawyer. So again, if there is some kind of situation um, if you have, if you're dealing with the father of your child, that could be the king of swords and perhaps a Leo person uh, that you may decide, holy moly, there's so much noise. It's, it's, it's uh, really distracting me. But um, you may be having to decide whether or not you're going to stay with somebody who's the father of your child and, and for some people and um, maybe even deal with lawyers custody issues what have you that might be going on there might be some for some of you there may be messy stuff happening I, I was just remarking yesterday when I was doing your reading the first time about that full moon in your sign so you may be having a lot of endings. Uh, a chapter may be closing in your life, but it seems kind of a little bit messy. There's a lot of loose ends that you need to take care of. 
And perhaps you jumped the gun and you got involved with somebody just to kind of, because you knew that your primary relationship was over with, but now you have a new complication that you have to deal with. The bottom line is that the outcome is the, the full card. So you starting on a new journey, the zero, the unknown quantity. I always liked the full card. I always thought the full card was like this inviting card because it's like starting over from scratch. Now, this, I always associate it with Aries too, but it's associated with Uranus, so that would be more like an Aquarius energy. And it's really because there's an unpredictable quality to it where you don't know. And also, Uranus is about nonconformity. And that could certainly play into what's going on here, too. Uh, it's very possible with some of you. Oh, yeah, you know, I didn't think about this. Aries, you are experiencing this transit of Uranus in your sign. So a lot of you in the last however many years, probably um, seven years. I don't know how long Uranus has been in, in Aries, probably like seven years or yeah probably since 2010 2011 I don't know but several years now you've been experiencing a lot of maybe sudden shifts maybe going in totally different directions and people you know scratching their heads and saying what happened to the, to this person talking about you and like they have they have like totally changed even their personality, their interests, what's going on with them. And f for you, this is even more pronounced because you have Pluto in Capricorn making a hard angle to your sun or your rising sign if you're watching for your rising sign. By the way, I don't intend these for necessarily the rising sign. It's not like, oh, wow, it really matters. It's really just to group the different sun signs. But, I mean, if that's, if you really identify with your rising sign, then maybe that speaks to you. So, yeah, so that's interesting that I got the full card for more than one reason. Because it's kind of like um, saying that now you're you're um, starting anew and you, you, you don't have any baggage. You know, there might have been a lot of things that you're going to have to sort out before you can take that new journey. But it's kind of like the aftermath of that full moon in October. You're kind of having to play clean up or, 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 or deal with clean up. So let me see. I'm, I'm picking a card from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. I keep trying the same cards. Peace. My number is 23. It's funny because, um, you know, for Aries, I wonder what the word peace means to you, if you even like the word peace, because I know Aries likes, sometimes Aries likes conflict. And this is one of the, the other things. On an unconscious level, do you choose relationships that are a little bit unsettling because you, you prefer that, that drama Freedom from attachment, radical acceptance. It doesn't get any better than this. A quiet mind, a heart fulfilled, freedom from want, and the soul's satisfaction. The way to peace is through radical acceptance. Everything in your world is exactly as it should be. Harmony is beautiful. Enjoy it. The relationship message for this card is, when two people are in true alignment with one another, they have an innate harmony between them. They are as two perfectly tuned instruments playing together. Sometimes it's impossible to tell who is who. Peace is yours and it is to be savored. Now, I did pick this card for another sign and they actually had the Two of Cups as a prominent part of the reading. So it totally resonated, you know, it went along with that. I think for you, Aries, is just to gauge the valid validity or um, compatibility of your relationships with whether or not there's harmony. 
Whereas you might think that if there's conflict, that there's something spicy and exciting there. And really, that is just a lack of harmony. It's not, you know, it's drama. It's not, it's not um, passion. Passion is, is something that is not draining and is not chaotic. So anyway, hopefully some of this resonated with you. If you would like a private reading, please click on the link below, Aries. Otherwise, have an amazing November. Bye.